Hello, hello. Welcome back to Feywood Mead. Welcome to Feywood Mead. If you are new here, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you. Today, I am showing you how to make something that may or may not have worked. <laughs> As a reminder, for those of you who may be brand new to this channel, or for those of you who might just not know, most of what I make here, if not all of what I make here, is literally an experiment. I just recipe create sort of on the spot without any knowledge really of what I'm doing exactly. Sometimes things flop and sometimes things work really well and they stick around in my recipe compilation. It's not just in my brain. I don't know why I pointed at my brain, but things that I would definitely, definitely, definitely make again or encourage other people to make. Some of those experiments uh, recently performed pretty well at Maser Cup, for example. Pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Just thought I would put that out there. Honeydew melon. Melon is something that, uh, uh, sort of controversial, I suppose, because oftentimes it doesn't really work. <laughs> it doesn't, it just doesn't. Um, and I think a, a large part of that is A, because melon flavor can be hard to capture because it's so light. Uh, and B, I think because it tends to get a little funky, which is definitely how this was. Oh, look at that. There's some schmutz on the bottom. This is cleared in the bottle over the last month that it's been in here, a little over a month. It's, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. This might be a long ager. Uh, or age might not help it at all. It might just be doomed. So here's the thing. The honeydews, A, were super cheap, B, were incredibly flavorful and ripe. And this is a no water recipe, by the way. I used 100% melon to make sure I had enough to capture the flavor. So keep on watching and you will see exactly how I, <laughs> how I made this. For some reason, I neglected to actually film the cutting and scooping of all the melon flesh. So here's a photo that I took of the melons. Now, I can't remember the exact name of these things. I do know that they are a type of honeydew melon. I used about three and a half of them, and this is a no water mead. So all I did was I literally, I just scooped out the flesh it was, it was super watery. You can kind of see in the photo how the melon is a little pinkish. That's because it was super ripe. It was incredibly soft and fragrant. So all I did was use a spoon and I scooped it directly into the carboy. Because it's no water, it was actually really difficult to get a gravity reading. If your sample is too thick, then it could have uh, an incorrect reading. So I used two and a half grams of Go Firm Protect. I used a half a pack of D47. I typically use just over one gram of Opti White. I do also like to use Booster Blanc and I used Blanc Soft. So I like to make a little yeast slurry starter. I'll use some nice warm water and get those yeasties going in their go firm. And then I'll add uh, a little bit of mead after a few minutes, a little must, if you will. Now, as you can see, this container is quite full. I did not put an airlock on here. I used cheesecloth. And uh, as you can also see here, it made a massive mess. It totally exploded. And uh, so <laughs> I ended up having to move all of this to a bucket. So this stirring here is day two. And I just love, love, love when you stir up a fermenting mead, you break that surface and it is so bubbly and fizzy and it's just so satisfying. From here, you can see that I have racked and it was a huge pain because what do you know, there's lots of solids in there. And then I ended up with a very, very full one gallon carboy, beautiful. And after some time it cleared and you can see this thick <laughs> mash at the bottom. Oh my goodness gracious. And I didn't even need to add anything to clarify this. Just cleared all on its own. Very proud of my mead here. 
After some tasting, which was very funky, I decided to add a little bit of tartaric acid, give it a little bit of a boost, as well as some more tannin. This did ferment out, so once it hit 1.00, I did go ahead and stabilize this mead so that I could back sweeten. I suppose I didn't mention that from the start here, but I used one pound of Bubba's Wildflower at the start, not just the melon. And then I added uh, another seven ounces here at the tail end for back sweetening. Allowed this to clear again, and then I bottled. Voila. All right. It's tasting time. I'm slightly scared. Slightly nervous, slightly scared, slightly apprehensive. Slightly. Let's open this up, see how it is. It ended at 10% light. Uh, 1.022. I've been going really on the light side and I need to get a little bit heavier, a little bit bolder, I think. I've been going light because I was like, I don't even really drink my own mead that much. But guess what? I still don't <laughs> regardless. Ah. Anyway. Hmm. Okay. Let's just put this in this glass, swirl it around a little bit, let it air out. Hmm. I definitely get honey, but it's kind of nice. Like there's almost like a, a caramel or like a toffee like scent mixed with the melon. I'm surprised by what I'm smelling right now. I have some hope. <laughs> There's a little bit of hope. Okay, I don't wanna get too hopeful. Smells can be deceiving. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> oh, it's transforming. There's a fruit fly that's like immediately trying to get into this bottle. Where did you even come from? That toffee like scent is there in the palate and it sticks with you. It lingers. Whoa. I think I did it. I didn't know how this was gonna be. It smelled disgusting <laughs> for the longest time. It did not taste good when I bottled it. It didn't smell good. I mean, there was melon, there was melon, but it was weird. And this is not so weird. It's very full, full mouthfeel, full bodied. This structure that has appeared from the melon. Okay, what did I do? So you all already saw, literally just saw everything I added, everything I did. Um, I like couldn't remember if I used a fancy honey or not, and I didn't. I just used a local wildflower honey. I don't know where this flavor, this flavor profile came from a blend of the honey and the honeydew. I'm glad I kept it light, but with how pronounced this flavor is, I could have added more alcohol. I mean, I could have, I could have upped the alcohol a little bit. I kept it light in fear of the flavor disappearing and not being very present. Cause sometimes for very delicate flavors, you want to stay a little bit lighter on the ABV because that alcohol sensation can kind of overwhelm your delicate flavors. Um, well, I suppose if, if done well, then it wouldn't unless you were like up in like the 15% range or something, then I could see it real, you know, kind of becoming an issue, but this could easily be a 14% me, like a between a 12 to 14 ish percent mead and be great. I mean, these honeydews were so flavorful. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm actually really shocked right now. I didn't get them from like a standard grocery store. I picked them up at this weird, <laughs> This, this little local store. And he got this load of honeydews on like super sale 
Um, he'll just like get a palette. I think of basically like excess fruits and vegetables. And I got these at such a cheap price. I'm trying to remember what I even got them for. It was like, uh, it was like a dollar 50 or two, I think per me It was like something insane. Uh, I think this recipe really relies on having a good honeydew harvest. If you grow them yourself, if you go to the grocery store, you definitely want to like buy one, try it, you know, wait until it's ripe because it needs to be pretty juicy. <laughs> like super juicy and ripe. Uh, see how pronounced the flavor is and then go from there. Because like, I don't know, uh, I can't really give advice necessarily on how to find this mystical <laughs> fruit. Um, you just have to get lucky. This batch was extremely good wherever it came from. Fermenting just the, the fruit I mean, it was like a really crazy transformation, as you saw, where it was it was solid. So initially, my ABV would be like ten and a half percent, but I took off the half because it was it was difficult to extract just pure liquid. It took me forever, actually, which is where like a refractometer would really come in handy. I should just buy one. I mean, they're not very expensive, because having to fill a hydrometer with with a liquid was really difficult because it was so thick and that thickness can affect your ABV. So keep that in mind. Um, that's why I deducted a, just a little bit because I don't know. It could technically be under 10%. I don't know. I know when this video comes out, it's like winter. It's not melon season, but consider it for next year. Put it on your plan as something to maybe try out. It's a very interesting mead. I've never had anything like it. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you feel so inclined to support me, I'd really appreciate it. So growing, you know, it's not like I make a whole lot off of YouTube, so hobby's quite expensive as you may know. So any little bit really helps. Uh, check out all the links and everything in the description below. And I hope to see you again uh, next week. Hopefully I post next week. <laughs> hope to see you again soon. Okay, Mwah. thank you for your support. Bye, bye-bye. Oh God.